Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization. You asked and we answer hypertrophy training modalities, all the ways in which you can train for hypertrophy explained. And here's the first video. When will the next video be out? Who knows? Maybe never. Just kidding. We'll put it out. But in any case, straight sets is the first and actually most core way to train for hypertrophy. All right. So what's a straight set? It's just a set but we can be more specific. Straight sets are defined as the following. You do one set of five to 30 repetitions, which is generally accepted as the probably best hypertrophy range of reps. You know, you do it pretty close to failure, enough to get a challenge, anywhere between three and zero reps in reserve. And then afterwards, before doing more straight sets, potentially, you rest a normal length of time. What's a normal length of time? A lot of people say it depends. Luckily, we sort of crack the code here at RP and we know what it depends on. We have our four-factor model of rest times, which if you actually go and YouTube search that, it has its own several videos we've made for it. So it's really, really well explained, but it's actually a simple concept. I'll explain it right now. When you do a straight set, then time for you to do a next set is at the least when your local muscle, the actual exercise you're doing, let's say you're doing squats, when you can do at least five reps in the next set. So for example, if you did a set of 10 in the squat, great, and you rest 15 seconds, okay, and you try to do more squats, you might get like one more rep. Okay, one rep is not hypertrophic enough for it to count as a set's worth of hypertrophic stimulus. So, you know, anything beyond five reps is probably pretty decent. So if you can't do five reps yet on your next straight set, rest more time. Secondly, you wanna make sure that your synergists are not preventing you from doing as many reps as possible to stimulate your target muscle. So for example, if your quads are recovered from the squat to do another five reps at least, but your lower back is still really tight and still burning and still really tired, and it will give out before you can do five reps, or it will give out before your quads do, then you have to rest longer. So the synergists all have to be ready. Same idea for the bench press. If your chest is ready to go, but your triceps still feel a little funny, rest longer. Next, Cardio can't be a limiting factor. Remember the muscle, target muscle, the local muscle we are targeting has to be a limiting factor. So in squats, it's quads. Your squats have to get close to failure or to failure because your quads are giving out. If it's your cardio giving out, no bueno. So if you're still breathing ultra heavy, rest longer until you're breathing much more normally. And then you know that on the next set, there's a high chance that your quads will stop you again instead of you just gas out and get out of breath. And lastly, these are not in order. They just all have to be checkmarked at some point. Psychological drive right? You have to feel strong again and capable. You guys know what I'm talking about. When you've trained hard, you do a set of squats, you rack the bar. If 15 seconds, someone's like, you ready for another set? It doesn't even matter if your local muscle's fine, synergy's fine, cardio's fine. You feel defeated. You feel weak. The brain with various neurotransmitter concentrations, everything like that, can't just repeat a hard effort over and over and over, especially in really hardcore exercises like squats. So sometimes it takes a few minutes for you to sort of get your, get your mojo back. Like, all right, all right, all right. Put that heavy bar on my back. I'm ready. Until you're ready to do that, don't do another straight set. So how long should you rest between straight sets? Depends. If you're doing straight sets for calves, sometimes the answer is like, I don't know, 15 seconds. You can check all these boxes. On the other hand, if you're resting you know, for squats or deadlifts for high reps, gee, it could be five minutes or something like that. Can you rest longer than all these check marks? Sure, but there's an argument that if you rest much longer, you're kind of wasting your time. Probably no worse results, but certainly a certain amount of results in more time is probably less efficient. So normal rest times, and when we say normal rest, that's what we mean. And straight sets, if you say, okay, I did four straight sets of squats, that actually in the definition of straight sets, assume you're using the same load every single time. Not necessarily the same reps, but same load. So straight sets at 405 pounds in the squat means you did 405 for 10, and 405 for 9, and then 405 for 9, and 405 for 8, something like that. Or even it could be 405 for 10, 10, 10, doesn't matter, but the weight on the bar has to be the same. If the weight is heavier, it still counts as a straight set, now it's ascending. If the weight is lighter, it counts as a down set, and we'll cover that in another week video because that's actually a different modality with its own specific cases of use and best practices. Now, straight sets, you may recognize, that are like probably the way most people train most of the time, and that's a very good thing. There's a reason straight, set, straight sets work really well, and I'll tell you why. A lot of the hypertrophy that you're trying to generate occurs through the stimulation of your faster twitch muscle fibers. And those faster fibers take long time to recover relative to the slower twitch fibers. So if you're doing, let's say, a set where you have a special magical machine and the machine adjusts 
it's loading directly to mirror your fatigue. So the first rep is a 1RM. The second rep, the machine automatically adjusts it to your 2RM load. And then your 3RM. So you can just keep going. People have hypothesized that if you made such a machine, it would be the ultimate training modality. However, there's a problem. After the first, oh, gee, 10 reps like that, your faster fibers, the ones that really want to stimulate, the ones that grow the most, they're just doing probably almost nothing. They're just sitting there smoking a cigarette like, we're fucked. We're way too tired to do shit. They're not generating a ton of tension or metabolites or much of anything else, and thus they're not getting a hypertrophic stimulus. Now, what are the fibers that keep you going? Because now you're on rep 15, rep 35. What is powering that? Is the slower twitch fibers? Yeah, sure, you can do more reps like that. They don't grow a ton. So what's the solution to that problem? Well, rest. You do a set of relatively heavy load, anywhere between 5 and 30 reps, and then you rest a normal amount of time until, basically, if you check the four boxes, that implies that your faster fibers are probably pretty well rested, so they can, again, contribute to the movement very profoundly. And if they contribute profoundly, they generate lots of tension, and then they get a stimulus. So, yeah, ideally, we would have some kind of method where we didn't have to take any breaks at all. We could go into the gym to train quads. Two minutes later, after the hardest single quad set of your life with descending loads, you would be done. Sure, that'd be a good workout, but it wouldn't be the best because rest times refresh the faster fibers because they're very fatigable and allow you to hit them again and again and again until you stimulate them enough to where they're at their maximum growth stimulus, back away, go home, eat lots of food, and get lots of rest, come back, repeat. So straight sets, because of this idea that faster fibers grow more and straight sets are probably the best way to target your faster fibers, they are the core of what makes you jacked. Yeah, it's cool to use all the other modalities and we'll get into those videos uh, in the next few months, but remember that straight sets are your best friend, okay? It's like that lovable dog, that golden retriever, usually. You're like, hey, buddy, and he's always looking at you. And then, you know, like, you die and he sits by your grave for a long time. Very sad. You guys ever watch that movie, Marley and Me? I haven't, because I, I don't need to see that shit. I cry plenty in my daily life. I don't need any more tears. In any case, what are the upsides of straight sets? Okay, just not to be uh, a dead horse, which if you had a dog like Marley, he'd probably help you beat the dead horse. They are the meat and potatoes of training. I mean, they get most of the work done, stimulate the faster fibers. If I had to gamble on what kind of one training modality I would choose, if I was a stupid thing that people ask all the time, like, if you had to pick one training method, what would it be? It would be straight sets, okay? And on straight sets have another benefit. Drop sets, myo reps, which we'll get to later, they're so tough, proximately, psychologically, because they're so painful, that a lot of times you can degrade in technique during them, and it's like towards the end of like five mile rep sets, I don't know, you started doing leg presses. I'm not so entirely sure what you're doing now. <laughs> that doesn't tend to happen on straight sets because as you get really tired, you rack the bar and you rest a full long time and you get to go again and you get to start pretty fresh. So it's a really awesome way to focus on technique, which is why one of the best use cases for straight sets is beginners. Okay, beginners, almost every other type of set is inappropriate for beginners. Straight sets are what you should be doing. Gee, you know, the vast, vast, vast majority of your work for the first two to three years of your training can and probably should be straight sets because they allow you to stimulate great growth and focus on technique really well because they give you breaks enough time so that technique does not degrade. Now, straight sets are not appropriate for every situation, or at the very least, they're not the best for every situation. What are their downsides? They can take a long time to do. So if you are in a rush or your work schedule is such that for a few months, you know, until this big project gets done at work, you have like 45 minutes to train three times a week. Gee, you know, you got to train your whole body. If you're resting three minutes between sets, you're like, all right, yeah, I did on the warm-ups. I did four sets and I'm leaving. What? Well, I have to do 20 more sets to cover the rest of my body. So in that case, you might not do straight sets. You might do some of the other modalities that have shorter rest times because straight sets just take a long time. It's like, um, you know, uh, you're just buying a certain amount of investment if you're doing straight sets. Right? Okay, it's like buying a house. You know, you don't recreationally buy a house. You're like, okay, it's going to take a lot of money. It's going to be worth it, but it's going to take a lot. Straight sets are just like that from the perspective of time. Lastly, straight sets have a limit. Remember we said straight sets are either ascending in load, which is probably not a great idea, 
because then why aren't you trying hard? You know, I'll actually, I'll answer this question now because I'm sure you guys will ask if I don't answer. Why are ascending sets not a good idea? So if you start your work sets, why is squatting 315 in the first set, then 335, and then 345, and then 355 in the sets, bad idea? Because you're the most fresh and most strong, and your faster fibers are most ready to lift on set number one. And they are incrementally more fatigued on sets two, three, four, five, six, et cetera. So if you're going to go heavy to target those faster fibers, you should do that shit in set one. So descending sets are actually probably more effective than ascending sets in, in the average circumstance, right? So if we said, okay, straight sets are, you can't ascend, probably not a good idea, but at the very least the same load, so like 315, 315, 315, what happens if you start at sets of eight or whatever at 315 in the squat, and then after five sets, you still need more quad work, uh, and you want to do a few more sets of squats, but like your last set was five reps and you're like, yeah, my next set's going to be like four reps. But remember, four is just shy of our best hypertrophic rep range. So then what do we do? Well, shit, we got another training modality that does exactly that, solves that problem, has its own issues, has its own applications. We'll talk about next time when I see you guys, not necessarily next week, but maybe. So hopefully you guys took something from this. And if you have any questions, go to hell. I'm just kidding. Just ask them in the comments below. Like, subscribe, do all the YouTube things, and we'll see you guys next time for, uh, you know, more learning.